Um, they're a little bit weird looking if you wanted a more toned down look of this shoe, but still getting the basic of their performance. You can always go with the Jordan 19 SE. Uh, you can probably find them on East Bay, or not East Bay, eBay. And um, yeah, that sucked. Should I start over? Yeah. Okay. One. I thought that they were really, really nice on court, especially from a cushion perspective and a lockdown support perspective. Should I start over again? All right, guys, so that pretty much takes care of everything for the 19, damn it. All right, guys, so that pretty much takes care of everything for the Air Jordan 19 performance review. This is absolutely a fuck. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Nightwing2303 from weartesters.com. Today, we have part 19 of the Air Jordan project. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, guys, so here you have the traction and it is an overlapping type of herringbone. You have an over piece and then an under piece. Not really sure what that's there for. Maybe it's for outdoor usage. When you go through one layer, there's another layer underneath. And that goes full length from heel to forefoot. As far as its performance goes on a very clean court, this was unbelievably awesome, but any dust or anything like that really sticks to these side pieces, both on the heel and the forefoot. And that just basically made the traction really, really slippery. So um, clean courts, awesome. Dusty courts, not so great, even with wiping. As far as cushion goes, you have a Phylon midsole, you have a double stack zoom unit in the heel, and then a zoom unit in the forefoot. And these things felt like really comfortable and supportive pillows. It was probably one of the best cushions that I've ever experienced in any Air Jordan whatsoever. I've worn all of them from one through 28, and this one was just really, really comfortable. Sometimes when you have double stack in the heel, it makes the heel a little bit mushy. And in my opinion, it just wasn't. The foam carrier is just firm enough to where it's gonna support your foot underneath, but still give you adequate cushion. As far as materials go, you have patent leather on the toe, then you have really nice plush leather all the way around the rest of the shoe here with this weird kind of like, it looks like a finger trap to me, but this is supposed to represent uh, the Black Mamba actually, uh, way before Kobe's day. The materials in my opinion are really, really plush, very supportive, and in my opinion, durable. So I really wish that they'd still make shoes like this, but unfortunately you can only get this with certain brands and it's not with Jordan. As far as fit is concerned, they fit true to size and the lockdown is incredible, probably their best feature. The entire shroud area is a little bit funny looking and a little bit hard to adjust, but basically you take this strap and then you put it underneath this bungee. Once you do that, you pull it through the buckle and then you tighten to however it is you want, like however tight and it just basically wraps from the forefoot to the heel, really closing your foot into the shoe, which is probably like the best support feature that I've ever experienced, bar none, no matter what shoe it is, this is just the best. My only real complaint is just kind of nitpicking at these laces, they're like bungee cord laces and got this little lace lock thing on here. It just didn't stay very secure. Uh, luckily, the rest of the fit was really awesome because of this whole strap system. So if these were traditional laces, I think it would work a little bit better. However, it wasn't too bad. Uh, like I said, this is just nitpicking. They're underneath. All of this is doing most of the work, but I would have just liked this to be more, I guess, traditional, but they were, they were trying something new back then. Ventilation in the shoe pretty much sucks. You do have a neoprene sleeve, which absorbs a lot of the moisture. It's not perforated at all. So this would be the only area that ventilation or airflow would be able to come in and out. And because of that sock, it's not really allowed to. As far as support, most of that's coming from that fit and that incredible lockdown. And then you have a nice wide stable base here with two outriggers, which is really interesting. This one we're used to seeing, but this one was really cool back in the heel so that you're not kind of like teetering over too much and all that stuff. So it was interesting. I didn't have any issues as far as this restriction any type of range of motion, you can see both of them here. And I just thought it was a really cool feature. So but yeah, most of the support though is coming from that overall fit and lockdown from this guy right here. All right guys, so that pretty much takes care of everything for the Air Jordan 19 performance review. I absolutely love this shoe. Didn't think I was going to, just based off of visual appeal, I just don't like them. However, if you wanted a more toned down look, but still getting most of their performance features, you can always go with the Air Jordan 19 SE. They're not available in stores anymore since this is such an old shoe, but you can probably find them on eBay or soulsupremacy.com. Um, so that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, second thoughts on the beat. Ah! And you know. Big up to Lace Cadence. Ah! Been looking out for this one, man. I love hip hop music. I just hate the ego. The politics that follow it, getting caught in it can be lethal. See, I love the community, because the community will embrace you. But when you turn your back, the community is the people that will hate you. See, everybody's striving for that same shit to get paid and make it. And I'm